Alrighty guys, welcome back to another live set review from Brick by Brick, and today we have set number 75210. This is Moloch's Landspeeder, released as part of the Solo Wave in April 2018, containing 462 pieces and retailing, or 464 pieces, sorry, and retailing for $39.99. And the two was actually supposed to correspond to the number of minifigures included, so, you know, it throws me off. But, uh, the set has one instruction manual and it's the perfectly bound nice looking kind so that's that's cool and in addition to the two figures that does include these two Corellian hounds which you know kind of half count except not really again like the solo speeder this uh molex speeder is basically the entire build of the set uh, so you know it's it, it's a decently large speeder for what it is. It is a tad larger than Hans in length and width. If we take Hans here and put it next to it, you know, you can tell Molex is bulkier, but Hans has about the same footprint. I don't know. It, it's, it's very similar. Molex is a lot less attractive, I think, personally, at least, in my opinion. It's basically all gray, which is what a lot of Star Wars sets are. The dark tan does bring in a decent amount of uh, contrast, and the large dark gray sections, you know, eh, it, it kind of works. It does good things for the set, just I don't think it completely saves it. I definitely prefer the look of Han's line speeder. However, I do like the uh, asymmetrical appearance here. Uh, the colors are not matched at all, and you got some random greebling throughout. Uh, I appreciate that. I'm not going to say it's my favorite uh, look, but I appreciate it quite a bit. I like the grill going on at the front, and this is obviously a six-stud shooter. It's activated with this thing on the side, which is kind of hard to turn. Uh, it's easiest if you do it down at the bottom, uh, and you'll be able to shoot off all six relatively difficultly uh, there and you know they'll, they'll just shoot off like that and the greens may be a little bit distracting for you I don't know maybe possibly what do you think because if you just shoot them all off you can just leave them right to the side and then now it's not green I this is a lot more accurate to the appearance in the movie um, but you know Having the ability to shoot the studs definitely uh, is, is a good play feature. Even though I don't think there's... I don't remember the Lion Speeders being able to shoot each other in the movies. Or in the movie. Um, I do also appreciate this little gap there inside the black section. Uh, in between the two layers. The outer big bulky section and then the car of the speeder. Uh, on the back... Uh, there's a little bit of odd color uh, that you can see. Uh, well, there's a lot when this piece falls off, but uh, just inside where these back engines attach, they actually attach with clips, which is a little bit interesting. But a little bit of this color remains visible, not from most angles, but and like it's not super obvious, but it is there. Uh, this is Moloch's staff weapon thing. Uh, it just has a clip on the back that you can use to attach it. And there's also, inside this little opening here, a decent storage compartment. And you get this little uh, tray of goodies. You got some bones for the Corellian Hounds to feed them. You've got six extra green studs, which are, you know, extra ammo for the front thing. And you also have Moloch's little blaster, so there's a storage area for that. I like that you have a place to store both of the weapons. I think that's a good thing. And uh, these little engines on the back make use of these tooth-shaped tiles. It's cool in trans orange. Uh, nice piece to get. And uh, the last two little sections are the cockpit, which opens just like that. It's asymmetrical only on one side and only sits one figure, but they use one of the two or one by three with two stud jumpers in there to center him um, in a four stud area so that, that that's a little cool i like that and you also have a really tiny like suggestion of glass in the windscreen down below 
I mean, it, it really isn't super effective, but it it works because it doesn't have to be glass, really. It's kind of the deal there. And then up here we have this uh, little cage for the Corellian Hounds. I think they look good when they're facing out like that. And you can easily remove them. And, you know, just have an empty cage. Which, I think just having this cage here at all, period, does help with the look of this thing. I think it would have looked a little bit worse if this was just the same curve as the other side. So, you know, I think that uh, that is a pretty good feature there. Also, another good feature is the fact that this thing has wheels. Uh, so you'll notice it is actually, or it appears to be hovering off the ground, uh, mainly because the wheels are there, and, you know, raise it off a good, like, plate and a half, maybe two plates. So that's another solid feature, and I'm happy with it. Uh, the overall greebling detail on the outside is also, you know, pretty good. I just think it's not personally the most visually appealing of LEGO Star Wars sets. But all the play features are good, and it's not an ugly thing, uh, apart from how it's trying to be ugly, you know? It's, it's not supposed to... It's not resembling the most visually appealing vehicle, but for what it's trying to do, it looks good. The two minifigures in the set are Moloch on the left. You know, he's kind of in the name of the set, so he's probably supposed to be here. And then the other guy is Rebolt. Uh, he's also, I think, just a basically side goon thing from, uh, from Corellia and Moloch's gang. But... You know, he's, he's not a bad figure, neither of these are. I like the gunmetal gray color scheme that kind of the Corellian figures tend to have. They've got this dirt pattern on them. It's good, I like it. I like the printing on the back of Rebolt that I think is supposed to be like a strap for his uh, headgear piece. This piece is not a new mold, but it's brand new and plain tan. It was previously used on uh, POW from Rogue One, PAO, in Krennic's Imperial Shuttle. Uh, he does have a dual-sided face, and this face print is brand new for this set. I like this expression on the front better, uh, but they're both good. Also, the whip is supposedly new in black. I don't know if that's true. Uh, just bricks that says it is. And the torso and leg printing are, you know, pretty well detailed throughout him. Uh, Malik, though. It's a really impressive figure. He's got a brand new head mold. It's a lot of work to go through for a very small side character. Also, I like the printing on the backs of the legs here because he does get one of these slope dress pieces, the robes, which allows for printing on the back like that. Uh, the printing on the torso for him is good. It carries through to the robes very nicely. And, you know, you get you get a good design going there. And just to see that there's not a ton more left on the back that we couldn't see before, his headgear piece is dual molded. I like the insectoid scaly design that we've got going on here. There's some good gunmetal gray printing on the front. Uh, this front section is flat, and that's how they're able to get so much detail on there. Yeah, they, they did a really good job printing and molding and designing that headgear piece for Moloch. He looks like he does in the movie. Yeah. I'm very, very happy with the uh, with the way that this came out. Uh, both of these figures are good, but Moloch especially. And with his uh, this staff here, you know, he looks pretty respectable uh, with that. It's a good uh, accessory choice for him. Uh, obviously, it's built up, so it's not like 100% accurate, but, you know, it, it's good. I, I like both of these quite a bit. And then we have the Corellian Hound. There are two of them included in the set. They are identical. They're also identical to the one included in Han Solo's Landspeeder. These are cool little things. Uh, I don't think they'll be super duper common, like in the future. Pretty sure they're going to remain relatively exclusive to the Solo sets. And probably just iterations of these, uh, these two Landspeeders, really. Maybe the little speeder bike thing that the Imperial Patrol Troopers use. If they were to do that again, maybe they'd include one of these. I don't know. But really, I don't think this mold's going to have a ton of applications. So I'm very impressed that they went out of their way to design something so cool. Uh, the ridges on the top 
are pretty intricate and they go down pretty much the whole back. Little tail there, the legs, and the printing on there is pretty nice as well. I'm very happy with these. Glad to get two in the set. You know, basically if you get both sets, which you know, I definitely recommend getting them together. Um, you'd have a whole little herd of these Corellian hounds. Three, I think, is enough for a decent sized group. Yeah, I mean, I think the quantity and the design of this is pretty good and it definitely adds to the set. I don't know if it's good enough to take the place of a whole figure, though. Maybe two of them I would consider equivalent to a figure, so maybe three figures value in this $40 set. Eh, it could have used another, I think, but I'm not unhappy with what we got. Overall, I was impressed with Moloch's Land Speeder. I was not expecting to like it based on just images, but when I was able to get it for such a good price on eBay with the Han Solo one, which I did really want, I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Uh, it can't be that bad. And it was very impressive. The actual building of it was an enjoyable construction, and, you know, I'm happy with the end result. And I think that it particularly stands out when combined with Han Solo's Land Speeder. I think this makes for a really good scene, a uh, good little display, good play value too, having the two speeders that can, you know, chase each other. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty happy with the way each of these sets turned out, um, especially uh, Hans. Of the two, I would recommend Hans if you're just going to get one. I don't think Molux has a ton of value on its own, but I would definitely 100% recommend getting both of these sets. I think for $70, maybe it's a little bit pricey, uh, you know, for the whole batch here. But I could see 60 being reasonable. Um, 50 would be a wonderful price, but I think 60 is reasonable for what you get here. I think throw in another figure in each of the separate sets, and you know, 70 dollars would be perfect. But like maybe if they were just to include one of those patrol troopers in one of, in each of the sets, that would have been nice. Or maybe another character like Rebolt. I don't know, but. Bottom line is, I'm very happy with uh, these, especially if you can get them on sale. I think Hans Landspeeder is frequently on sale for like $24. Molex would be like $32, typically. So, you know, for those sale prices, I would definitely recommend them. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, review. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think of both of these uh, Landspeeders. Personally, I really, really, really liked Solo, so... I was, uh, you know, and this was one of the best scenes in the movie, I think. So, you know, I, I'm maybe a little bit biased, but I do really, really like these sets. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, review. If you did, let me know down below. See you guys all next time. Bye, everyone.